guess what song they end this film on. What's up guys? Welcome to 31 Days of Horror. I am Morgan Film Fan. Let's jump into some scares. So The Frighteners was a film that I actually, funny enough, never heard of until like maybe a year ago. Probably less actually. Um, I've seen the cover. I've seen like the VHS cover before. But it's just one of those that I've never really known anything about. Um, heard anything about the plot. Never really seen any trailers at all. Didn't know Michael Jake Fox was in it. And uh... I just came across it a few months back and uh, like was reminded of it and uh, watched the trailer, looked awesome and uh, I said I have to include this in my 31 Days of Horror and then I realized that Peter Jackson directed it and I'm like yeah that's an even bigger bonus. So I definitely had to check it out and um, had a blast with it. It's a really funny movie and it's a really good throwback to like um, kind of uh, Ghostbusters kind of style stuff. Um, there's a lot of cheap effects in it, definitely a product of the 90s, and not a lot of it, like a lot of it looks hokey, none of it looks pretty awesome or anything that can be done today, but um, the ghosts and stuff in it are really funny, like they have the best characters playing ghosts, I mean, for God's sakes, they bring the full metal jacket guy into this as a ghost and he's hilarious, he's doing his full metal jacket thing. Also played in uh, the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remakes, uh, R. Lee Herney, his name is. Uh, rest in peace to him, by the way. But uh, The Frighteners basically is about Frank, played by Michael J. Fox, and he's uh, like a, a ghost medium kind of thing. And he helps people with poltergeists and stuff like that. And then you got these two characters, Lucy and... Um, what's her husband's name? Ray. So Lucy and Ray... Lucy is kind of a psychiatrist, and she helps this woman named Patricia, who's played by Dee Wallace, famous Dee Wallace from many horror movies, including The Howling. And um, Dee Wallace is basically suffering from, uh, well, she claims poltergeists, but uh, Lucy being a psychiatrist basically is helping Patricia as a doctor kind of thing. And at the beginning, I love the scene where the poltergeists are all over Patricia's house and they're all coming out of the wall. Totally Nightmare on Elm Street style when Freddy Krueger comes out of the wall and it's just his figure coming out of it. It looks like that. That's the first thing I thought of. Um, but anyways, uh, Lucy and Ray end up getting poltergeists in their own home themselves, so they call this medium to see what the heck is going on. Uh, Mid-film, Ray ends up dying, so... Uh, Michael J. Fox ends up being able to see him because Michael J. Fox's character Frank is able to see ghosts and Ray basically wants Frank's help to communicate with Lucy again. There's this absolutely hilarious scene where Frank and Lucy go to dinner and uh, Ray is trying to tell Frank what to tell Lucy from the other side and meanwhile Frank, the freaking dick, <laughs> is uh, just saying his own thing and making up stories. And there's Ray just sitting there like, his facial expressions are just priceless. I love it. I mean, if I was in that situation as a ghost, I would be <laughs> freaking pissed. So another plot point is there's a bunch of deaths going on and they all seem to be heart attacks. So a bunch of people are dropping dead by heart attacks. Um, Frank, Frank or Michael J. Fox's character, Frank, ends up uh, noticing that before people die, they get this number on their head and that indicates that they're about to be next. And you can also see Death, the Death character, floating around and, and attacking all these people. Um, this FBI agent, played by Jeffrey Coombs, comes in, and he's one of my favorite characters because he is this just extremely eccentric, 
Um, Jeffrey Coombs is a great actor, but he portrays this guy so funny. And I haven't seen Jeffrey Coombs do too many comedic characters, but this guy is just eccentric, awkward. Um, he gets terrified when women yell. Uh, he just has these quirks galore. He's written so hilariously, and Jeffrey, Crook, uh, Jeffrey Coombs sorry, brought everything he possibly could into the role for facial expressions and uh, dialogue and just his behavior. That he's one of the most iconic characters in, like, horror comedy history, you could say. Um, it's one of his best roles, hands down. It's... I laughed my ass off at his character, and I could say that he's the funniest character in the movie for sure. Um, even funnier than the two ghosts, uh, Cyrus and uh, Stewart, is it? Yeah, Cyrus and Stewart. They're like the comedic uh, reliefs of the film, mostly. Uh, they're always cracking jokes and like playing, like joking around with each other and bantering on everybody because nobody can see them. But uh, yeah, Jeffrey Coombs' character. His name is Milton Danners, takes the cake when it comes to comedy. Uh, he's an FBI agent and he's investigating Frank because he thinks Frank is like some, you know, psychosis, delusional guy who's making up ghost stories and that is the actual murderer, murdering all these people. How he can give them heart attacks, I have no idea because they're all confirmed to be dropping dead of heart attacks. But anyway, um... Frank and like Frank is trying to defeat death and then he realizes that the only way to do so is to die himself so he wants to kill, kill himself but Lucy suggests that she can freeze him for temporarily so he can temporarily be a ghost and then she could revive him afterwards so he tries that there's this hilarious fight in a graveyard um the uh Full metal, full metal jacket guy comes back there's these ghosts with like huge guns um, even the FBI agent, uh, Jeffrey Coombs' character, um, Milton, I'm bad with names, uh, he uses big guns. Like, this whole film, like, I'm pretty sure nobody uses a handgun at all. Well, uh, Frank does, with holy water. <laughs> I, I'm gonna blow out these candles. I love when he's in the apartment building and he squirts the gun. He's like, don't worry, it's just holy water. Holy water and a handgun, it's fucking hilarious and but everywhere else it's like ghosts using huge ass guns there's this museum shootout that's absolutely hilarious and uh, the climax definitely gets very very silly um i probably won't go like super far into spoilers to say like what the reveal is and what like who the villains are really and the twists and stuff like that but uh, there is a twist that's well a couple that are pretty cool there's one in particular involving death where I'd rather it be normal instead of a twist but it is what it is um, but the whole climax is very silly and that's when the CGI gets its worst uh, everything is basically like this hell world and these other dimensions and everything just looks so cartoony like Tron level uh, maybe not that bad but, uh, yeah, it's it's just hokey, it's silly, but it's still funny and it's still good. There's nothing to take away from it. And, uh, basically, it's just one of the funnest ghost movies, you could say. I heard one reviewer call it, uh, PG-13 Casper, <laughs> which is kind of true. And, uh, it's fun. And Michael J. Fox, not that I've seen a whole lot of films with him in it, but, um, you know, Teen Wolf, obviously. But, uh... This one was a surprise for me, and I really had a good time with The Frighteners for my first time watch, and discovering it for the first time very, very recently, so I have good things to say about it. I really had a good time with it. All the villains are great, all the ghosts are hilarious, and uh, there's some really, really funny moments in it, so good job to The Frighteners, and I loved it. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice, or if you like my film reviews. I'll be back with more soon. Um check out what else is on the channel and stay tuned for 31 days of horror take care and cheers take care and cheers